This is a cargo ship from 1945. It was traveling alone. Split in two without warning. After a long investigation into the accident. Finally found the culprit. It was hydrogen, which is widely distributed in nature. As the first element in the periodic table. Can be said to be ubiquitous on Earth. It's one of the most important elements in human life. And it's the lightest and smallest atom of all the elements. So it has strong permeability. It can easily get into other materials. And if it gets into metals, it can cause a kind of hydrogen embrittlement. Hydrogen embrittlement can severely reduce the plasticity of a metal. That is, it makes the material less strong. And become brittle and crack or even break. And once it occurs, it can't be eliminated. That's why hydrogen embrittlement is also known as the plague of metals. Hydrogen embrittlement is caused by two main factors. One is environmental hydrogen embrittlement. That is, the material itself is very low in hydrogen. But when used for a long time in a hydrogen-containing environment, hydrogen atoms penetrate and hydrogen embrittlement occurs. Another is called internal hydrogen embrittlement. That is, the metal material is smelted and processed in the welding, pickling and electroplating processes. Hydrogen enters the metal. And hydrogen embrittlement occurs not only in steel. Stainless steel, aluminum and titanium alloys are also subject to this phenomenon. The reason why hydrogen embrittlement causes delayed fracture. This is due to the fact that hydrogen penetrates into the metal. Into the metal, it spreads and collects in the area of stress concentration. The metal atoms in this area are usually dislocated and have inclusions. It's easier for hydrogen to get in. When a large amount of hydrogen diffuses into these defects, it generates a huge amount of pressure. And with the residual stresses inside the material and the applied stresses on the material, with the residual stresses inside the material and the applied stresses, when the combined force exceeds the material's yield strength, and fracture occurs. Although the dangers of hydrogen embrittlement have long been recognized, but it is difficult to remove it completely. But it's hard to get rid of it such as reducing the time spent in the pickling process, and the use of low hydrogen welding rods, and by heating metal parts at high temperatures, of metal parts to dissipate hydrogen. These measures can also prevent hydrogen embrittlement to a certain extent. Have you ever experienced hydrogen embrittlement?